Okay, in this video tutorial we're going to have a look at um, a couple of different things. Uh, first of all, we're just going to look at animation. Um, just the basics of creating animation. So what I'm going to do is just create a just, uh, plane, just as a reference for a floor. I'm going to create a sphere. Let's just shade this. And let's just move this sphere so it's sitting on the surface. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of do the basics of animation with uh, just this bouncing ball. Just to illustrate how you get animation keys in there and how you can actually control them as well. Um, okay. So I'm going to have this ball bouncing up and down. I'm just going to do a loop of this. So just a couple of things with this. We've got our timeline here, and as we drag through the timeline, uh, we're dragging through the frames. We have our timeline limit, so this is set up um, over 24 frames, um, the end of the playback time. And we've got the end of the animation, 48 frames, so that's um, one second, two seconds. We're working in 24 frames a second. If we just go over here, we have the animation preferences. Uh, one of the main things in this, if we just go down to this time slider, um, we can see all the different settings here as well. Uh, one useful thing on this is the playback speed. If you're doing things like uh, particles uh, and particles, anything like that, any simulations, play every frame is really useful to have on. In this case, we're working this animation, so I'm just going to go in and change this to real time, 24 frames a second, and just click on save. And there we have uh, our animation ready to go. So I'm just going to click in here. There's a couple of ways to start creating keyframes on this. Um, what I'm going to do is just click back to the editor. The easiest way is just to click S on the keyboard. So S for set driven uh, for set key. So with the ball selected, click S. That keys out everything on here. Okay, every single property. Um, if I just move this forward, I'm going to move to around frame 8. I'm going to click S again, just to create a set key for all of these things. And then I'm going to go to around frame 16, S again to set the keyframes. Okay. Uh, this is one way to do this. You could go in and um, actually change these as you go through as well. I'm just creating uh, a set of base keyframes for everything in this. Then I'm going to go back and edit them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, Auto Key. So if we just click on this little key down here, and we're now in Auto Key mode. And all this means is that anything we move now or rotate or transform is going to actually capture that movement. So I'm just going to start here. What I want to do with this is have this start in the air and hit the ground and then go back into the air. So I'm just going to grab this and just move this. So I'm translating this around 6.97. Uh, let's just type in 7 in this. So that's actually captured that information now. Okay, We've actually got the uh, interpolation between the two keyframes. If I go to frame 16, what I want on this is actually to create a loop with this. So um, I'm going to lift this up in the air again. And the great thing of going over to the channel box is that I knew I translated that to 7. I can just go in there and type in 7. And now that's going to be the same as frame one. Okay. I'm just going to go in and just set my playback. I'm going to set this to, um, I'm actually going to set it to 15. The reason being, because we've got a loop on this, that I'm just going to look at first of all, uh, is that this will loop round to frame one again. So essentially frame 16 and frame one are the same frame. So what you'll get is sort of a hold, almost like a pause in the animation. Okay. So by setting this to 15, we're actually just looping nicely through. So if we just click on the play button. What I may do is just lift this up a little bit more. I've still got my auto key on. Um, let's take this around uh, 10, maybe 9. And again, go to frame. Now, I just need to bring back frame 16 here. Let's set this to 9 as well. 
So we've got a very simple animation plane just through this process. So S to set a keyframe, and then we can go with auto key on, and we can just position the other things around this. Okay, so we've got our loop. So if I wanted to actually extend this loop, so right now we've got this going up to frame 16. If we go up to uh, say frame 48, you can see the animation stops. We've got no more keyframes on there. Uh, we could go through and actually go through another eight frames, create another keyframe, go through another, uh, depending if you want the timing to be constant. Um, or we can also uh, just go into editing these keys in more detail. The best way to do that is through, we just go to Window, Animation, Editors, and go to the Graph Editor. What this does is gives you a visual representation of the keyframing. Just drag this out a little bit. Okay. Um, so we've really only created, we've created keyframes for everything in here. So we have keyframes for every single object. Now you see on pretty much all of these, we just have a flat line. This just means that nothing is changing. The way that the graph editor works is uh, it's over time, horizontally. So these are our frames, and this is our value. So if the value remains the same, it means that nothing is animating, essentially. Uh, if we go up to our translate Y, so this is actually as we animated on, you can actually see we've got curves in here, which are showing how this animation is actually working. Um, we'll look at more about curves and the curve editor, uh, the graph editor, in further um, later sessions, but just have a quick look at this, okay? Uh, so a straight line means nothing. If we have one point going to another point in a straight line, uh, just going down or up, that's a linear animation. So I can actually set these, uh, just drag around these keyframes, and I can click up here and just create a linear animation. All this means is that this is going the same speed throughout its movement. Okay. So it stays at a constant speed throughout this. Um, we can customize this, and this is the key to animation, is actually uh, playing around with this interpolation um, to get the best results. So in terms of what a ball actually does, it starts off uh, slow and then goes fast. So the steeper the curve on this, when we start creating curves, the faster the movement is, the more shallow the curve is, the slower that the object is going. So um, let's just bring our keyframes back that we had. So what these are doing right now, um, this is called an ease in, ease out. It's starting off slow, so the curve is less shallow, then it's gradually getting faster, and then it's starting to slow again. And then again, it's starting off slow, it's going a bit faster, and then it's slowing again. So it's accelerating, and then decelerating, accelerating, decelerating. Um, in terms of a ball animating, it doesn't actually do that. Okay, what it does is accelerate the whole way down, then stop pretty much as it hits the ground, and then uh, start off fast and gradually get slow. Okay, so we need to make these curves more shallow. Uh, so in terms of this, the easiest one. Well, let me just show you the handles first of all. Uh, so what we can do on this is actually change the interpolation of this. So if I grab a key and then I'm going to click on this little handle to the side and just drag around that. And then we can go in there just with a move tool. We can start changing the way that this is working. Okay, uh, you've got to be careful with this. If we start going up over the line, was that what it's actually going to do? Because this is value. Remember, it's just going to go above that value. So this is actually going to go up in the air before it starts coming down. Yeah, got that little. So just be careful about that. But we can change these around. I want this pretty much where it was. I'm going to try and keep this quite straight. Um, and what I'm going to do is click on this one. Now, if I was to grab one of these handles, this is a Bezier handle essentially. So if I pull one, it affects the other. So what we're doing here is we're actually taking this down. And again, this curve is going under. You imagine a line down there, it's going under that value. So it's actually going down under the, 
floor. So if we just go down on this, it goes into the floor and then comes up. And again, we don't want to do that. So just undo that. So what we can do with this is we want control over both of these handles individually. Uh, we can just click on this keyframe in the middle, make sure that's selected, and just go up to this icon here. Okay, Break tangents. Click on that, and then I can grab this one, and I can move that independently. So what I'm going to do here is we create, uh, so it's, it's um, coming down, uh, getting faster and faster as it falls, and then it gets to an abrupt stop, yeah? And then it comes out of that, it doesn't dip down below that value. So it hits the ground, and then comes out fast, and then starts getting slower, okay? So we just look at that in the timeline. Let me just take my frames back to 60. Uh, just so I can see this looping. So that's a much more natural movement. So if we wanted to extend this out, if we wanted to actually use more time and have multiple copies of this bounce, uh, we can do that. Let's go change that up. So what I can do with this is I can actually grab all of these keys. <coughs> Uh, remembering that this point here is an exact, uh, exactly the same value as this point here, so it will loop properly. If this changes, you'll get a jump in the animation. Okay. So what I can do with that is just go to Edit, Copy. I'm going to take my time slider over to frame 16, and I'm going to Edit and Paste. And there we've got a perfect loop of this animation. I could go in here now, so this is, uh, let's just go through to frame 31. I could grab all of these. We could copy them, and then just making sure my playback head is on the right place. Uh, we can just paste those. And we can do that indefinitely. So now, let's just pull this out of the way. Our looping animation. Uh, so if we wanted to drive this forward now, so we can do that in here as well. So let's just look at um, what we've got here. So say I want to push this on the Z axis. Uh, what I can do with this? Let's look at our translate Z. Um, so right now we've just got we've got three keyframes in here. We've got a keyframe right at the start. And then we've got a keyframe in the middle and a keyframe at the end. What I'm actually going to do, because I want to do um, just a, a straight uh, move forward on this at a constant speed, I'm going to get rid of this keyframe in the middle. So grab on that, press delete. Okay. Uh, we can grab this one. We know our end frame for this. Let's go through to say 46. It's actually a bit more. Um, let's go through to 48 for it. Uh, for this purpose, and so I can click on, oops, click on this frame, and we can actually go up here, and we can change the keyframe and the value. So here is the frame, this is the value. So if I just click on uh, this and tap in 48, it just takes this keyframe right to the end, okay? Um, so we can set animation in here as well. Um, just thinking about this value, what this value is doing. So this is at our zero position right now, so up here. Say we wanted to move this from back here and then move it forward. Uh, you've got to remember about in terms of negative space. So this is the Z axis. This is point zero. This is going off in a minus value. This is going off in a positive value. So if I want to start this a further back, I can grab this value here. And we can set this to say, um, If you do click off your object, by the way, it will get rid of the actual things themselves, the, the keyframes. So let's click on back on this, click on our translate Z just to show that one channel. Um, let's just grab this keyframe and I'm going to set it at minus, uh, let's say, 10. Uh, 
minus two for now. Uh, minus ten again, okay. Maybe about eight. That's okay. I wasn't looking at the right frame. I was wondering why it wasn't moving. Uh, let's just get this one and let's take this to, let's say, positive 10. So if I just scrub through this, now we've got a motion forward as well. Okay. Um, this right now is on this default interpolation, which is an acceleration, deceleration, easing these out. Um, I'm just going to have this as a constant speed. So I can grab these two keyframes, click up here, and click on the linear. And that's going to move at a constant speed throughout. Okay. Let's just look back at this uh, and translate Y. It's just in a little too flat on these. I'm noticing as it's moving, it's, it's in the air a little too long. Um, and actually, because this isn't looping anymore, we can actually put a bit of a variation on this. Um, so I'm just going to grab these and just drag these up a little bit. It's probably not moving forward enough as well in terms of the speed of this. So um, let's just go to the translate Z. Let's grab this and let's maybe take this a bit further forward. And also, uh, let's take this to minus 15. So by changing these distances, I'm actually moving, uh, making it go um, faster. I'm moving it further over the same amount of time. That's better. Okay. So that's just a bit of um, simple animation.